Hello there. This is Senator Patty Burkhalls with our show From Lansing to the Lakeshore. And we're going to do this section in a two-part program with Mr. Tom Clay. And Tom Clay is the Director of State Affairs Emeritus for the Citizens Research Council of Michigan. And he joined the Research Council on staff in November of 1997 at, after 30 years of working in various aspects of budgeting and finance within Michigan state government. He's become well known at, and has earned a well-deserved reputation as someone who speaks in a nonpartisan manner dealing with Michigan's budgets and Michigan's economy and giving us information going forward as legislators and also predicting. So he's here today to help share information with you about our state budget and where we are as a state going forward. So I thank you, Tom, for being here. We're real pleased to do this. Um, and I know this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of an, of an approach because we are going to do the program in two segments, knowing that it's there's more information than we can do in one segment, but we don't want to overload the voters with too much information. So we're going to try and get a good balance there. Okay. Well, thank you, Senator. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> well, why don't we start out by, by asking you um, where we are right now. We're in the middle of the budget aspects of Michigan. Um, we're dealing with some holes, literally unfilled holes financially dealing with the 07 budget because we're about halfway through Michigan's 07 budget year and looking at 08 going forward. So can you kind of tell us where we are right now? Well, legislators typically are, are dealing with at least a couple of budgets at any one time. And where we are right now is, uh, you're correct, we're almost exactly halfway through the state's fiscal year. But it's even more uh, critical in some other areas because uh, so many other organizations that depend on the state for funding are farther along in their years. Uh, our public universities and community colleges, our public schools, for example, uh, end their year at June 30th. So they only have uh, roughly three months left in their year. Uh, the state is about 900 million short in terms of revenues of being able to pay for the appropriations that have already been made and, the and those form the basis for the, the uh, plans and the expenditures that these various entities uh, uh, are, are in the process of, of executing. Uh, 900 million is a lot of money. It turns out to be uh, uh, more than 300 million in the public schools and around 600 million in the state's general fund. And the general fund spends most of its money for corrections, health care, mental and, and, uh, uh, and, and other health care programs, including Medicaid. Uh, the Department of Human Services, which is where services and, su and uh, cash support for the poor are provided. This is where protective services and adoptions and foster care and other things are funded. And, um, and higher education, our public universities and community colleges. So most of the, this $600 million shortfall, uh, if it is uh, covered by spending reductions, will surely hit these important areas. And it's, uh, it's quite a challenge for our legislature and the governor to deal with. It is, and, and let me um, add to that a little bit right now because um, I'm still in a Rotary Club back home, and, and I attend as often as I can, and I have to tell you that uh, I have three superintendents who attend our Rotary Club, and they remind me every day that they're almost at the end of their school year, you know, which is just a couple months away because here we are mid-March right now looking at the budget for 07. So if we were to somehow cut schools, they have literally two, maybe three, two and a half months left to their school year, which is almost impossible for them to do. Well, I, I too am a Rotarian, <laughs> and uh, there are two local superintendents in my Rotary Club. We meet on, on uh, Tuesday mornings for breakfast, and I hear from them all the time, and I hear a lot from the school superintendents of the, the rock and the hard place that, they, that they're finding themselves between. Uh, the schools uh, really have no place to turn. They can't uh, raise taxes. Under Proposal A, uh, they're not permitted to, to uh, raise extra operating revenues through taxes. 
Uh, some have fund balances that they could spend down if, they, if they're cut. And uh, some conceivably might have to close early in order to avoid running deficits. And some may run deficits. So there are a variety of, of outcomes. What's at stake here appears to be around $120 of cuts per pupil. Uh, the, the overall shortfall works out to about $225 per pupil, but about half of that will be covered from some adjustments that reflect the very good performance in the uh, uh, retirement system portfolio. So that contribution rate can be reduced a bit and, and offset some of the shortfall in revenues. But $120 per pupil uh, to somehow cut in, in the last couple of months of, of classes is going to be a really tall order. And yes, it will be. And I, as one of my superintendents reminded me the other day, if he were to lay off people um, with l about two months left to the school year and he has to give them, for most employees, 30 days notice and then they have to pay r unemployment costs, it's like almost impossible to deal with. Um, but, but let's back up a little bit for a minute here and talk about why we find ourselves in this problem. Um, we knew, at, well, after the election, we knew at the first of the year that there were some holes in the 07 budget. And it became aware to the legislature as we found out that three departments had overspent um, and not a small amount of overspending that had not been, depending on who you talk to, and not been reported, but certainly not been reported to the legislature in a timely manner. And we've also seen <coughs> reduced revenues coming in according to the projections that we had been given as, as legislators, which is what we use to, to deal with the budget. So can you talk sure. a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, well, last uh, May, uh, the state and this had its uh, revenue consensus conference. And this is an aspect of state law that, that is designed to, to uh, uh, cause the legislature and the governor to use the same set of revenue figures to, mm -hmm. to finish the budget. And that revenue forecast called for some moderate, moderate growth with a little bit of accelerating growth uh, through, uh, the, through and into uh, uh, 2000. Eight. The uh, actual outcome was very different. Revenues started to deteriorate. The revenue performance started to deteriorate in July, and we ran for several months with year-to-year uh, -year declines in revenue. And it was clear, probably by, uh, well, depending on who was looking at it, uh, certainly by December, January, that we had a serious shortfall in terms of the revenues for this year to pay for the appropriations that were based on a more optimistic forecast. Mm -hmm. And so most of the problem this year, the 900 plus uh, million dollar problem this year is revenues. In the school aid, the whole problem is revenues. The revenue figures in, in the school aid fund currently are expected to fall a little less than 400 million short of what was what was uh, projected last spring. And so it's, it's, it's a reflection of the economy that we're in. It's a reflection of all the bad news we've been hearing about our auto industry. And if you, if you want to look to one single pl explanation for this, um, the auto industry and manufacturing uh, is the biggest uh, explanation. But we're also seeing weaknesses in other areas, office furniture and chemicals and home appliances the housing market and the housing industry. Jobs are continuing to decline. We're, we're into our seventh year of job losses in our state. Uh, 